What's up y'all, this is Jason. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I wanted to give a brief introduction on networking and kind of simplify it. First thing I want to note is why is networking important? Because almost any iPhone application, especially one like if you're working at a job, it's going to be communicating with servers, different APIs. It's basically going to be communicating with the internet because it needs to grab the data that it's going to display. And it also needs to, sometimes it needs to send data, right? Like if the user makes changes to their account or something, depending on the app, it needs to send those changes to the server. And that's where URL session comes into play. That's one of the things that Apple provides for us that's super helpful and lets us easily communicate with different servers, APIs, URLs. You can think of those as the same, by the way. They're not the same, but when you're working with URL session, it's, you're basically just making a response to some HTTP URL. So we're using URL session to send and receive information. But the one thing that we're missing is there has to be a common language for the server and our application to interact because we're not just receiving like a string or an image and we're not just sending that information, right? Uh, there needs to be a common language that the server understands and that our app understands and that's where codable comes into play in terms of decodable and encodable because the common language that the server and our app uses to communicate is JSON which stands for JavaScript Object Notation and let me show you guys an example so this is right here is a JSON it's just a curly brace and then you have a key and a value and it can look very different I'll show you guys a different example this is some JSON here. And JSON is how a lot of communication happens between servers and different types of apps or clients or websites. And that's why it's super important to know this stuff. So let's actually get it to an example. Let's open up a playground. We'll call this networking. So for this networking example, we're just gonna wanna print this response. So what are the, th the two things we're gonna need? We're gonna have to work with URL session and codable more specifically decodable because encodable is when you want to send data you encode it and then decodable is when you're receiving data you decode it let's create a function called mate network requests we're going to be using async await so we're going to mark this as async throws all right so the first thing we need to do is we, when you want to make a url request is you need to create a url or a URL request and or to be honest it depends on your use case for us we're gonna use just a URL for now so we're gonna say string and we want to copy this put this in here ah. and make this bigger and now we're gonna uh, call our URL session. So when you call URL, you wanna call sh URL session shared and then data. And then we wanna call the ones that are async throws. So from URL, from, you see here, this is asking for a URL request, but we're gonna look for the one that's asking for a URL. So this one. And if I go, if we go back, you see here that this returns a data and a URL response. So that means we have to, or we should create a, a tuple for data and the response that's being returned from this function. What else do we need? We need a try await because this function is marked async and it can throw. And now we can pass our URL in here. And now we have our data. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to print the data if I'm having some weird issue. And a way to do that in, in Swift is you can call print string, I believe content, here we go, you call string decoding, no. Right here, string, string data. string data and encoding. So if we call data and then our encoding should be UT8 or UTF8. Oh, I think I have to import foundation. Let me run this. UTF8. Yeah, there we go. 
And oh, looks like we need to make sure that this URL is not an optional. So we're going to wrap it in a garlet. And now we just have to call this function. I'm not worried much about error handling in this video since we're going to focus on the networking side. So this function is called is marked um, try is marked async throws. So we're going to say try wait. And now let's try to run this and see if it prints the data. It prints it here, and this is very hard to decode, right? So that's why I prefer to use Postman or my Chrome extension. I forgot the name of this. Sorry. <laughs> So if we go here, we can clearly see that this is just an object that returns a name. So now we need to use Codable to decode this JSON into something that we understand because right here, this using string to convert it into a, to convert the data into something that we can understand. Because if we try to look, if we try to print the data, let's see what happens. Yeah, we just get 24 bytes, which we don't even know what that means or what, yeah, what it could be. So to decode this, you basically have to line up or the models to the JSON response and what you want for your particular use case. This one is super simple because it's just one string, right? So we say struct equals, uh, I like to name it response and we'll call it codable or decodable. You could call it codable, but I like to just use decodable if I'm only using it to decode. Then we say let name, and this will be a type string. And that's all you have to do. You have to make sure that the this first name matches what's in the um, what's in the JSON response, and you want to make sure that the type also matches. As you see here, we have a type string, so that's what we put here. And then you create your JSON decoder, which is, will be called decoder. JSON decoder, decoder, dot decode. We'll say response dot self data. And one thing about decoder is it can throw, so you want to mark it with try. And not only does it throw, but it actually returns you the decoded data. So I'm going to say let result. And now let's. Let's print result here and let's try to run this. Boom. And you say, you see our response here is of type response with a name and type code. If you wanted just the value for the name, then we would just go to print. If you go to results dot name, you see here, it already knows that, oh, this is a type X code already knows that this value right here result is of type response. So it knows that it has a property for name. So when we do dot, the name shows up. And if we run this, we should get the, just the name now. Yep. Type, typey code. All right. So that was a brief introduction into networking and how Swift gives us URL session and codable to communicate with the, with the server to get our information also decode so that we're able to easily access and send data to and from our server. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions below. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.